Ayo, what's up mga guys? Magandang umaga. Tanghali man o gabi. Saang sulok ka man naroon sa mundong ibabaw na ito. O dito guys, comment reaction lang tayo kung meron tayong may comment Dito sa interview ng ating Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos Jr. Dito sa Bloomberg. Ayon. Ganun natin ha. Kung meron tayong may comment dito. To 7.5% for 2022. Well, I think we I think we will be able to manage at least 7% for uh, for the last year. And uh, we may, uh, we are hoping to exceed, and I think it will happen, we will be able to exceed our projections of 6.5% uh, growth uh, for next year, for this, rather for this year. And uh, uh, again, uh, we're optimistic that the growth rate can actually go beyond 65 and hover maybe around 7%. That is for 2022 or 2023? For 23. For 23. What's driving that optimism given that most are expecting a global recession 65 percent chance they say of that happening well uh because i i believe that certainly there is so much uh, space room to grow uh in the sense that we have we are starting very many new things now i i suppose like every other economy and the basics in our economy have been rather stable uh, our growth rate has remained above six and a half percent uh for 20 Two, and I think 23 as it will be the same situation. Our unemployment rate stays uh, is, is, is continuing to, to go down. And for that, uh, once the, I, I look at the unemployment rate, and so long as the unemployment rate is not at an alarming level, then it's very uh, it's quite likely that you will not have to uh, have to go through a recession. So that's what we are counting on. Uh, the problems, of course, that we face are similar to to uh, other countries and inflation is actually the one thing that we are uh, having to deal with um, and having to ha intervene uh, in many ways so that to bring inflation back down. Inflation at a 14 year high, onions yes. costing about yeah. 11 US dollars per mm -hmm. kilogram and the ordinary people are not able to afford that. Yeah. What else can you do? Well, what we've done is we have uh, increased the supply. Uh, it's, it's very, very simple. It's really a demand and supply uh, situation. Uh, the onions, for example, if you, it's a very simple analysis, you look at our production rate and how many, uh, how much we produce and how much is the, the demand, and there's no way you have to import. Now, uh, in the long term, however, sugar is in the same, we have the same situation. We have to import because our production is not high enough. But the long term, uh, the long term, solution of course would be to increase production mm. and that's what we are working on so these are these are measures that we are doing these interventions are i think until we get in place the systems that will start to get our production levels up how, but that, successful, that, that's the long how successful do you think you've been as agricultural chief given where prices are right now well i i think uh, we can ask we can say that we have started already to rationalize the system, because the there has been the uh, imports illegal and legal have been a problem, uh, mostly the illegal imports that have been going through, and the, at the very beginning it was almost impossible for us to determine how many onions there were, how much we had in country, because some of it was smuggled in and we didn't know where where they are and what they were, where they came from, um, so. That we have, we, we've rationalized that now, and our importation schedules are well established and uh, well understood, right. and uh, all done in keeping with uh, uh, the consultations that we've had with all the stakeholders, including the onion growers in the Philippines. Right. I want to talk about the South China Sea. Mm. You have said that you want to resume talks on oil exploration mm. in the South China Sea with China. Mm -hmm. How do you think you can break that stalemate? Oh, it's uh, <laughs> it, that's a difficult that's a difficult thing to have to do because the the impasse really has occurred uh, in the application of law, and both sides are, are say that this area uh, belongs. We say it's just a maritime uh, territory of the Philippines, and of course China claims the same, and therefore the application of law 
is the local law is the uh, Chinese side uh, insists that it has to be the Chinese law and Philippine side the same uh, we may find a way around that is be limited uh, to exploration and uh, hopefully uh, I, I think there's still some give and take well, what are the there. red lines for the Philippines and what are the areas you're willing to concede well, <laughs> we cannot concede. We cannot concede any of the territorial claims that are being made against our established territory. Uh, so that is the red line. That is something that it, that, that that will not move, uh, and it's something that we cannot cross because it's a very slippery road from there. Mm -hmm. uh, there are reports suggesting that China's militias uh, swarming and yeah. perhaps uh, looking to seize. Uh, some of the land features. Mm. Uh, what are you doing about that? And is there any intention of lodging a diplomatic uh, protest? Well, we, we send note verbals and we bring the attention. And that's why when I met with President Xi, uh, both in APEC and um, in the state visit that I just, I just had to, to the People's Republic, I said we have to find a system so that these sort of things do not happen. Because uh, if you look at the we we'll call them incidents that have been that have been going on in the past few weeks, months. Uh, it really is a very clear indication that there's very poor communication between the two sides. And I, I suggested, and I think we're going to establish it, is that we'll have a, a line of communication that is higher up. Uh, so that those, we, forget, we, we have already a bilateral group that's working on the issues on the South China Sea, West Philippine Sea. And, uh, but I think I asked to raise, I think that it should be raised to a certain level so that the members of that bilateral group can directly call their president. And so if there is a problem, if there is a decision that needs to be made, my team can call me directly and the same for the Chinese side. Just very quickly, President Marcus, I'm just wondering if China does seize some of those features, will the U.S. come to your rescue? Will it intervene? Just very quickly. Well, yes, they have already made that commitment. They have already made that commitment. And uh, as a matter of fact, when, uh, when there are certain reports that come in, uh, some of the American ships come down uh, and make their presence felt. So uh, that's just, uh, we, we, we were hoping just to keep and maintain it in that, <laughs> at that level. And uh, the, uh, we, of course, all of us uh, that are stakeholders, ASEAN, Asia-Pacific countries, uh, all just want peace because we really have a great deal of work to do in recovering our economies. Ayong guys, narinig nyo naman at kanya ng uh, sinagot ang mga tanong patungkol sa sibuyas na yan at sabi nga nung uh, interviewer ay 11 dollars per kilo nako naman, nako naman ayan na, narinig nyo na ang kanyang kasagutan ang ating Pangulo patungkol dyan sa isyo ng sibuyas at sinabi niya ay kailangan nga daw mag-import Ayan naman, Mr. President, ay paparating na ang anihan ay bakit pang mag import Kawawa na naman ng mga farmers. Ito ay aking opinion lang. Ayan, dito naman tayo kay Gerald Bantag. Ay yun, at uh, tingnan natin ang balitang ito. Please live, Margot, magandang gabi. Kami para sa DOJ panel, walang sapat na ebidensya para sampahan ng kaso ang mga pulis na isinasangkot dito sa pagkamatay ng siyam na aktivista. Pagdating naman dito sa musyon ni Bantag sa DOJ, ayon sa mga prosecutors, walang merito ang musyon ni Bantag. Disyembre ng nagdaang taon ng inihain ni Suspended Bucor Chief Gerald Bantag ang motion na mag-inhibit ang Department of Justice o DOJ sa pag-iimbestiga laban sa kanya dahil sa pagkamatay ng mamamahayag na si Percy Lapid at believed inmate na si John Villamore. Naniniwala kasi si Bantag na ang budsman ang may jurisdiction para imbestigahan ang inihaing murder complaints ng PNP at ng NBI laban sa kanya. Sabi rin ni Bantag na may impartiality si DOJ Secretary Jesus Crispin Limulla dahil hinatulog na daw siya nitong guilty sa pagpatay 
kamay sa pamamagitan ng mga media interviews at dahil sa umanay bad blood sa pagitan nilang dalawa. Pero sa resolusyon na inilabas ng panel of prosecutors araw ng Yerkules, denied ang motion ni Bantag dahil sa kakulangan sa merito. Ayon sa panel of prosecutors, ang murder complaints laban kay Bantag ay walang kinalaman sa Bucor para ang reklamo ay matinig sa ombudsman. Meron din daw memorandum of agreement sa pagitan ng DOJ at ombudsman na naglilinaw sa mga kasong didingi ng bawat isa. They also explained na may meron palang um, memorandum of agreement between the DOJ and the ombudsman kung saan nilinaw talaga nila yung um, kumaga gray area na pinatawag natin concurrent jurisdiction kasi may mga crimes, especially mga normal crimes, na may concurrent jurisdiction ang ombudsman tsaka DOJ. So they had to come up with a memorandum of agreement para iklaro talaga yon. And in this case, dahil murder case, it's a normal, normal crime, it fell within the jurisdiction of the DOJ, especially dito, dito muna sinampa sa DOJ and it wasn't filed in the ombudsman. It's more with us than the ombudsman kasi hindi naman yan, you, you don't kill in the performance of your duty. The people that you're guiding, hindi naman yun ang, ano yan, hindi naman pinag-uusapan yun sa dating klaso. Eh. Kung sa ombudsman, well, performance of duty dapat eh, hindi naman sa performance of duty. Isinasantabi naman ng panel ang isyu ng partiality. Anito, hindi sila kailanman nagpalabas ng pahayag laban sa kahit sino man para maging indikasyon ito na magkakaroon ng bias na investigasyon. Sinabi rin ito na ang anumang resolusyon na kanilang inilalabas ay inaaprobahan lamang ng Prosecutor General, ng Provincial Prosecutor o ng City Prosecutor at hindi ng kalihim. Hindi rin daw nakikilahok ang Justice Secretary sa preliminary investigation. Sinabi rin ng panel na ang anumang inilalabas ni Remulia sa media ay galing sa joint investigation at case build-up ng NBI at ang PNP. Sinabi naman ni Secretary Remulia na ang kanyang mga pahayag sa media ay pagpapakita ng transparency sa kaso. I, I dialogue with you guys. You're the ones that you who talk to me every day about this matter. It's, a, it's just a matter of complying with my job to, to, to be transparent uh, about the job that we're doing here at the DOJ. Dahil naman sa disisyon ng panel, ang preliminary investigation ay tinakda sa January 24, 2023, alas dos ng hapon sa Justice Hall Building sa Manila. Ito ay para na rin sa paghain ng counter-affidavit sa mga respondent. Sa madala, maliban naman dito ay binasura din ng mga prosecutor ang murder complaints laban sa labing kitong polis na dawit umano sa tinagurian ng mga makakaliwa na bloody Sunday killing na ikinasawi ng siyam na umano mga aktivista. Sa resolusyon, walang probable cause para sampahan ng kaso ang mga polis. Ayon kay Secretary Trimulia, bago sana inihain ang reklamo, ay tiniyak muna na meron silang matibay na ebidensya at huwag anang kulayan ang naging resolusyon ng DOJ panel. Hindi naman pwedeng file tayo file ng kaso. Hindi mo naman kayang manalo, wag mo na mag-file. So, basically, sinas ang resolve ng sinasabi ng prosecutors dyan, improve the cases that you're filing. So, we can really uh, come up with a resolution that is worth prosecuting. Yun lang yan, follow the evidence. And, you know, it needs more case build-up. Ayong guys, narinig natin naman, naman, talaga naman, talaga naman. Siyempre, napag-usapan na na yan ng ombudsman at sa DOJ na talagang alam na this, ika nga. Ayon, at dito, dito tayo muli sa interview ulit ng ating Pangulo. Patungkol dito sa Negrang to, hindi ko kilala kung sino ito. World Economic Forum. Pakinggan nga natin. Honored to have His Excellency uh, Ferdinand Marcos, the President of the Philippines, join us and just to open up the session to share your perspective on nutrition security in your context and why it is such uh, a priority issue for the Philippines. Over to you, Your Excellency. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your introduction. Uh, I'm pleased to be uh, joining you this morning. And uh, as, as we acknowledge, uh, the distinguished panel experts, ac academics, executives, and officials who we will be hearing from uh, during the discussion period. It is quite apropos that we hold this gathering prior to taking our midday meal for the day. <laughs> for us in the Philippines, an essential and perennial component of a meal is one served with rice. Filipinos join over half the global population where rice is an essential Ayon, binanggit niya ang lunch daw ay one meal of rice. Ay bakit kaya nung pumunta ang mga vlogger sa Marakanyang ay walang rice. Puro tinapay lang. Ayun naman. Essential grain, the veritable stuff of life. We simply cannot get enough rice. 
It was not too long ago, just over 70 years, when the Philippines embarked on an experiment to fortify rice with thiamine and other nutrients. Mm. Where and these, uh, this experiment helped solve the severe problem that was existing in our country then of beriberi, which was a leading cause of death at the time. It's now considered as a model for public health nutrition and for rice enrichment programs in other countries. Beyond rice, we created the National Nutrition Council 48 years ago to supervise, coordinate, and evaluate the national nutrition program for all public and private agencies. Food security remains at the forefront of our national agenda anchored on our vision for a prosperous, resilient, and secure Philippines by the year 2040. They are the overreaching goals of this administration that are to build an inclusive society when no one is hungry, where Filipinos live long and healthy lives, and where they are provided with an environment built upon trust and security, and where they can be innovative and remain smart and responsive to the problems of the day. Underscoring all these lofty goals is ensuring that each and every one is provided with quality and ample nutrition. In a 2021 Global Food Security Index, the Philippines ranked a modest 64th out of 113 countries in four dimensions of food security metrics. We have made significant gains in the past few years, but more certainly needs to be done if we are to attain Sustainable Development Goal 2 on zero hunger. It bears emphasizing that the challenge of nutrition is different for you and for me, from your economy to mine, from us here to the people back home. Among our priority interventions are those geared towards making food available, affordable, accessible, amid the looming global food and energy shortage. Government spending will focus on productivity enhancing interventions for the agricultural sector, research and development is uh, going to be a very important component for this as uh, with the advent as has been mentioned with the advent of the uh, climate change issues uh, this uh, the, the impact on climate change is, uh, has to be part of that discussion government spending will focus on uh, this on the agricultural sector but also it will uh, in the distribution sector for as uh, as uh, all governments we buy a lot of food to uh, to provide for our schools there's a feeding program for children uh, to provide uh, for especially during the pandemic for assistance uh, to those who are in trouble and we have learned uh, during during our sessions uh, here that systems-based and data-driven cooperation is key to achieving security and the challenge we face in nutrition is no exception. So let me offer a few ideas. We must, first of all, boost productivity in agriculture and fisheries, including through climate resilient technologies and promote production even in non-agricultural areas such as urban and vertical farming and community gardening, gardening for subsistence supply. The food from the toil of our own hands is the food that will most nourish our bodies. We must invest in facilities, logistics, and systems that bring the nutritious food to our people, much like a grander scale of farm to table, and increase the capacity of our institutions to enforce regulations that enhance food quality. We must also cooperate to develop technologies that increase the nutritional value of our food and content and prolong their shelf life, which are uh, sometimes uh, contrary uh, goals. Uh, and again, we count on uh, the research and development that will be undertaken and the new technologies that will be discovered uh, for us to be able to bridge that gap. Let us incentivize a nutritious lifestyle, promote active and health-seeking behaviors across different ages and income levels, and create an ecosystem based on the concept of green and circular economy. We are looking to working with the WEF and various stakeholders on a holistic and integrated plan covering both food security and nutrition security. The work of the WEF's New Frontiers of Nutrition, a vital component of the equally vital future of consumption platform, is commendable in this regard, 
in providing us all with the first big leap towards nutrition security through a common paradigm on the purpose of nutrition and the future of food and developing principles and indicators to sustain our efforts while aiming to create economic value for nutrition. Friends and partners, I look forward to productive and insightful outcomes from this discussion at this, uh, today. I'm confident we will be able to arouse high impact, actionable, and collective ideas to steer us all forward on our common goal of nutrition security, not only in health and food, but especially in the quality of that food. I wish you all a nutritious lunch, but <laughs> not to be had before, an enjoyable and productive panel session. Thank you and good night. Ay yung guys at uh, yung tinanong sa kanya ay binasa lang din ang isinagot niya, ano? Parang uh, scripted ba? Ayun naman. Kayo nang bahalang umusga. Bahala na kayo. Hindi tayo makapag-comment diyan. Ayan, magbabasa na tayo ng inyong mga comment. Kunti lang naman po ito. Sabi ni Josephine A. Luna. Umpisa natin dito. Anim lang yata ito. Anim lang. Nita Castaneda. What the hell is going on? What a shame. Sabi niya. Ayan na po. Ang Pangulong nagbabasa lang sa sinulat ng iba. Pa English English pa. <laughs> ito. ito naman si Juanito Cruz, mahirap talaga maglagay ng pangulo na hindi man lamang nakaranas ng kahirapan. Yan ang malaking pagkakamali ng mga bumoto diyan. Si Delia Comya naman. Lapitin at iipitin nila si FLM. Si Buyas ngayon lang nangyari yan. Yun na nga. At yun, narinig nyo ang sagot ng ating Pangulo. Yan, talagang ala, ano niya talaga, ang importation daw, ang kasagutan. Ito naman si Kid, Kid Panda at ito yung ating baser. Eh. O sabi niya, si FLM lang ang malakas, hindi makalabas. Bigay na ang pwesto, pabartolina, may nalalaman ka pang kondisyon. Ha, 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 bulok, bulok. Malalaman mo yan pagdating ng panahon, Kid Panda. Baka magsisi ka sa yung mga sinasabi. Josephine A. Luna, tamsakdan, ading roman, totoo ba yung may limang magsasaka ng sibuyas sa Pangasinan, nagpakamatay? Opo, narinig ko po sa Senado, dahil nalugi sila, ayan o, oh. dahil nalugi sila, hindi nila matanggap ito. Ay, ano na ang problema ng ating Bansa, Presidente BBM, ano na, yun na nga, e, tapos mag import na naman. E paano makakabawi imbes na yung mga naani, na hindi na yung mga traders pang kikita, ay e, kumita man lang yung ating mga farmers, ay sinabi na dyan, no? mag import na naman ang sibuyas, sinabayan pa yung anihan. Ano ba naman niya, Mr. President? At sinabi na nga, yung isang magsasaka na yung pamilya niya, ano ba yung kapatid pa niya, yung nagpakamatay. Dahil sa utang, hindi na nila mabayaran. Dahil sa pagtatanim ng sibuyas, dahil nga ang murang-mura naman yung sibuyas. Nako naman po. Ayun na nga, may nagsasabi na nga na ayaw na nila magtanim. Dahil sa ganyan, mga uh, nangyayari. Ayong guys, at hanggang sa muli, ang iyong kaibigang Roman Carinuel TV, nagsasabing kayo na ang humusga sa mga nangyayari sa ating mga pang-araw-araw na pagkain. Talagang sampu na nga ang itlog. Bumili ako sampung piso na isa sa palengke na yun ha. Eh di, kung bilhin mo sa sari-sari store, eh, 11-12 na yan. Nako naman. At uh, talagang nangangamba ng araw ang mga mga bakery na talaga namang gumagawa ng mga cake ay pangunahing ingredients ang itlog. 
Alos lahat na ay nagmamahal na. Ayan guys at hanggang sa muli, ako'y magbabalik.